States. America is a country consisting of 50 states, a federal district, five major self-governing territories and various possessions. But the way the territory is organized might change soon. Territories might become states and possessions might become territories. So in this video, I want to take a look at what might be the 51st US state. A quick mention to let you know that this video is sponsored by World of Warships. Today, the US has 50 states, but this number has changed a lot since its creation. 13 colonies revolted against the British, and one by one, these initial 13 ratified the 1787 Constitution, thus being admitted one by one into the Union. Delaware was technically the first, followed by the other 12 very soon after. As time went by, more and more territories became states and joined as well. Usually the progression was made east to west, with the exception of the west coast, California, Oregon, Nevada, and Washington, which joined before some of the Midwest. The last continental state to join was Arizona in 1912, and Alaska and Hawaii were the final ones joining in 1959. With the American flag changing every time more states were admitted, adding one more star per state. And since 1959, for 61 years, no other states have joined the Union, but some could. Even if we set aside all the possessions, which one could argue are too small to be a state, the US still have their federal district, five major self-governing territories, and any of these, plus some other specific ones, could make a case for their admittance to the Union. Before that, and very quickly, like I mentioned, today's video is sponsored by World of Warships. I know sometimes sponsored messages are annoying, but they really do help the channel. Plus, I think you will like this one. World of Warships is a free-to-play PC game, but it's not like those other free-to-play games. This one is actually good. In it, you can command some of history's most iconic war vessels, unlocking new ships as you prepare to dominate the oceans. You can command the USS Enterprise, used during the Pearl Harbor War, and USS Missouri, used during World War II. It has more than 300 warships, fully detailed and realistic. The game has weather effects, plus you can even customize and upgrade your ships. If you're looking for a game with a lot of explosions and battle, this is the one. If you want to try it out, just click the link in the description, and during the registration, use the code READY FOR BATTLE 2020 to get some free bonuses. 700 doubloons plus 1 million credits, these are in game currencies, a free premium account for 7 days, and even some special ships. The USS Charleston with stars and stripes camouflage, and a premium Japanese ship Ijizuki. Now back to the video. What are these possible new states that might occupy the 51st slot and maybe even more? First, the federal district. That is Washington DC, formerly the District of Columbia, and this is the capital of the United States. The US Constitution provided for a federal district under the exclusive jurisdiction of the US Congress, and the district is therefore not a part of any US state. The states of Maryland and Virginia each donated land to form the federal district. Washington had an estimated population of 702,000 people as of July 2018, making it the 20th most populous city in the United States. It's also more populous just as a city than the state of Vermont or the state of Wyoming. However, despite all these people, they don't really have representation, going against the US's ideals in their revolt against the British of no taxation without representation. DC has one delegate to the House of Representatives, but he doesn't get to vote. Plus, they don't have a Senate representative. Statehood would change this and allow the people who live there to have representation. It would also allow full control of local authorities over the territory, since currently the final word of authority belongs to Congress itself. But some people claim this wouldn't be a good idea. The US, like many other federal states, has a capital federal district. This would eliminate that, or they would have to create new laws that allowed the federal district to be inside its own state. Brazil has Brasilia, Germany has Berlin, and both aren't states but exist within the federal system with their own specific status. 
If Washington DC became independent, it would rank 49th by population, 51st by area, 1st by GDP per capita, 1st by median household income, and 34 by total GDP. In 2016, the mayor called for a vote and a proposed state constitution was released. The vote happened, and from those who voted, 86% wanted statehood. The flag could stay the same, but it is arguable what they would call the new state. I guess Colombia would be the best name. Some claim New Colombia, Potomac after the river or Douglas. Then we have the five territories. These are American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Let's start with the one most people argue should achieve statehood, Puerto Rico. It's located around 1600 kilometers off the coast of Florida to the south, being a part of the Caribbeans. Puerto Rico has a very interesting situation. It is the world's oldest colony. It was first colonized by the Spanish in 1493, and since it remains as an unincorporated territory of the US since 1898, it's still technically considered a colony now of the Americans. Despite this, Puerto Ricans have been US citizens since 1917 and can move freely between the island and the rest of the US. Like DC, they have a non-voting representative in the House but no senators, but only some residents pay federal income tax. The territory's total population is approximately 3.4 million, more than 21 US states. So it would become the 29th most populous should it join the union. In 2012, they voted in a referendum and the majority of people wanted to become a state. In 2017, they voted again and statehood won with 97% although only 23% of people voted. But there is also another option, full-on independence. For instance, the UN Special Committee on Decolonization has often referred to Puerto Rico as a nation in its reports, because internationally, the people of Puerto Rico are often considered to be a Caribbean nation with their own national identity. The US itself seems somewhat divided as to whether they want Puerto Rico as a state or not. Various presidents throughout history publicly supported it, like Ford, Reagan, Bush Sr., amongst others. Next, we have Guam. Guam is an organized territory of the United States in Micronesia in the Western Pacific Ocean. It's the westernmost point and territory of the United States. The inhabitants of Guam are called Guamanians, and they are American citizens by birth, reaching in 2016 around 163,000 people. Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, while in the service of Spain, was the first European to visit the islands in 1521, and it was also then colonized by Spain in 1668. During the Spanish-American War, the United States captured Guam in 1898, and after the peace treaty, Spain permanently ceded it to the US. It has some movements which advocate US statehood or union with the state of Hawaii or union with the Northern Mariana Islands as a single territory or even independence. Apparently, the local government has began a UN-supported program to educate its people on what the different types of options they have, free association, statehood, independence, etc., so that they can eventually hold a vote for it. A 2016 poll conducted by the University of Guam showed a majority supporting statehood. An unofficial but frequently used territorial motto is where America's day begins, since it's close to the international dateline. So who knows, maybe it'll be where America's new statehood expansion begins as well. Then there's an interesting case, Chicago. To be honest, this one seems like kind of a joke and the very, very, very few people who advocate for it seem to be politically motivated other than any other type of ideal. They're upset that the people who live in Chicago have, according to them, too much power over what goes on in the rest of the entire state. Essentially, this would take the city of Chicago out of the state of Illinois and become its own independent state. A bill was put forward at the state house to vote for this, but it obviously got almost no support and failed. The new state would either be called Chicago or New Illinois, but let's be real here, it's never 
going to happen. Another territory that could become number 51 is American Samoa. American Samoa is also an unincorporated territory of the US located in the South Pacific Ocean, southeast of the actual independent nation of Samoa, being the southernmost territory of the US. It has approximately 56,000 people and only 199 square kilometers, although it's still slightly larger than Washington DC. Interestingly, American Samoa is noted for having the highest rates of military enlistment of any US state or territory. The Dutch were the first non-native to arrive in Samoa, but the islands were then separated between Germany and the US. Germany took what is now the independent Samoa, and the US took their current territory. This was around 1899, but their status has remained pretty much unchanged ever since. Apparently, they explored the possibility of statehood in 2005 and 2017, but neither of the times did they manage to achieve the title of the 51st American state. Also, they have one of the coolest flags ever. Samoa is part of an archipelago that doesn't entirely belong to the US, and the same case happens with the US Virgin Islands. Officially the Virgin Islands of the United States, these are a group of Caribbean islands and an unincorporated and organized territory of the United States. The islands are geographically part of the Virgin Islands archipelago and are located east of Puerto Rico and west of the British Virgin Islands, which take up the rest of the archipelago. Previously known as the Danish West Indies of the Kingdom of Denmark, they were sold to the United States by Denmark in 1917. Current estimates put the population at around 107,000. There doesn't seem to be any effort towards statehood, but in 1933 there was a status referendum where people got three choices, one becoming a territory, two integration, this wasn't specified but I guess the only way would be statehood, and three independence. 81% voted to be a territory but participation was under 50% so the results were not valid. However, that is the current status of the islands today. Next and finally are the option of the Northern Mariana Islands. The Northern Mariana Islands, officially the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, are an insular area and Commonwealth of the United States, consisting of 14 islands in the Northwestern Pacific Ocean. The status of Commonwealth is reserved for only two US territories, the Northern Marianas and Puerto Rico. This means essentially that the territory has its own constitution and self-government and only through their own decision will these be revoked in order to fully be integrated in the US. These were originally a Spanish colony then being ruled by Japan and then the US until today. The islands are home to around 54,000 people and it seems statehood is not on the agenda but there has been some discussion regarding the reunification of the Mariana Islands especially with Guam joining like we saw before. There's also the case of the US's possessions like the minor outlying islands. These are eight US insular areas in the Pacific Ocean. Baker Island, Howland, Jarvis, the Johnston Atoll, Kingman Reef, Midway Atoll, Palmyra Atoll, and Wake Island, and one in the Caribbean Sea which is Navassa Island. Except for the Palmyra Atoll, all of these islands are unincorporated and unorganized territories. As of 2019, none of the islands have any permanent residents, so I don't think there's really any point to these being thought of as possible states. In addition, we have other examples of places that could have become US states, but have since gone a different path. For instance, the Philippines had a small grassroots movement for US statehood. It had a significant impact during the early American colonial period, but is no longer a mainstream movement. Other possible states were mentioned on a video that I did a couple of weeks ago about proposed states that were never created, like the state of Jefferson, Deseret, or Texlahoma. If you want to see more about this, go to my channel and check that video out. And there is also a separate idea, not of current states dividing or territories slash possessions becoming states, but of parts of other countries 
or entire other countries joining the Union. Some very small movements have existed in Canada, which wanted some provinces to join the US, like Alberta or Quebec. Cuba also had some movements that wanted to fully incorporate it as part of the US. In 1870, the US Senate took a vote on an annexation treaty with the Dominican Republic, but it failed to proceed. In 1946, the US offered to buy Greenland from Denmark for $100 million, but Denmark refused to sell it. The Azores, Portugal's archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic, had a US motivated movement to leave Portugal and join the US. And there's also a few other examples. So that was a quick overlook at what the 51st state of the US might be if it ever comes to exist. Maybe it'll be the capital federal district, maybe another random city, maybe a territory, maybe a possession, or maybe even a part of a separate independent country. From my perspective, the most likely case, if there is to be a 51st state, is that it will be Puerto Rico. It's the one that makes most sense out of all these cases. But who knows? If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you think the most likely and or best territory would be. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.